Feedback loops are a foundational element of game design, wielding the power to either elevate or ruin a game's core mechanics. When misused, they can pose significant risks to the balance and player engagement. In the case of my game, a few unchecked feedback loops in the core design have caused large rippling issues throughout the rest of the game. Welcome back to the devlog everyone, in this one we're going to be talking about feedback loops and how they're important to the core design of my game Void Rush. Okay, so let's start with what actually are feedback loops. Feedback loops are just loops where the output feeds back into the input. These loops are found everywhere, even in science, nature, economics, really any part of the world. But specifically, in our case, they apply to game design. Now, there are two main types of feedback loops, positive and negative. Positive feedback loops are like a snowball effect. Think of a rich get richer type of thing. Negative feedback loops attempt to keep things in balance by redistributing. Now, when you hear the positive feedback loop, you might think that the snowball would always be positive. In Call of Duty, for example, when a player kills enough players, they get a kill streak, which helps them kill more players, which gets them more kill streaks to kill even more players, and so on and so on. So they just shoot up the scoreboard and it means the players who are doing very well do even better, and the players who are doing not so well stay where they are. But there's actually another type of positive feedback loop, and it can be kind of counterintuitive because it's in the negative. Now I know it's kind of weird to think of a positive feedback loop in the negative, but the positive part of that is just the snowball effect. So this can work in a negative sense too. Let's say for example you have a game where every player gets 100 coins, and players can spend those coins on getting upgrades to help get more coins. So the players who start getting coins early are going to get that one positive loop where players who have more coins can buy more upgrades to help them get more coins and more coins which buy more upgrades and so on and so forth. But there's actually another type of positive feedback loop that's happening here too and that's for the players who are losing coins. Say every time you die you lose 10 coins. Now the players who are dying are going to lose coins, which means they'll have less money to buy upgrades, which means they'll die more, which means they'll lose even more coins, and again, it kind of sends the whole game into a downward spiral. Now, this type of feedback loop can be really fun for players who are doing well, as they're kind of mopping up the competition, and every time they do better, they keep doing better, and they're just doing better and better and better. But it can also lead to a huge balance issue, where players on the bottom end of that scale really aren't having any fun at all, and just feel like they're being destroyed by the top players. Now, this can be good for fast-paced or competitive games, games, however, they're not so much fun in casual games, and done wrong, they can pose a pretty big issue to competitive games as well. But this is where the second type of feedback loop comes in. Negative feedback loops. A good example of negative feedback loops is the classic that everyone uses, but Mario Kart. In Mario Kart, the players in first tend to get pretty bad items from the drops, like green shells, or bananas, or things that just aren't super helpful. While the players in the back of the race are showered with invincibility stars, bullets, blue shells, and other things that help them advance. So this negative feedback loop works a bit more to balance it. So the players in the back will be helped more to push forward and the players in the front are going to be hindered. Now, this can be good for keeping a casual feel in a game. However, it can also ruin the competitiveness. For example, I think most of us have played a game of Mario Kart. Player in first place is a bit too competitive and they get upset when they're constantly getting hit by blue shells and they're constantly getting bad items and really just making the game completely unfair for a player that might be more skilled than the rest. Now, obviously in a game, in a party game like Mario Kart, this isn't a huge issue, but in more competitive games, it can be a problem. You don't want games to drag on forever, and if you have this constant rebalancing, then no players can really get ahead, and no players can win. So in order to keep your game engaging and fun, you need a balance of these two loops to keep the game fun for lower level players while still being competitive at the high level. Basically, you want to reward high level players for doing well, and give a little bit of a helping hand for less skilled players, so they feel like they have a fair chance. And we can kind of graph these feedback loops too. If we look here, this would be the graph of a positive feedback loop. As we can see, it kind of just goes up and up and up, as every time somebody gets stronger, they get more resources to do even better, right? So the graph goes up like this. If we look at a negative feedback loop, however, you can see this kind of sine wave effect where one player is getting ahead and then it rebalances to the middle and then the other player is getting ahead and then it rebalances back to the middle and this goes on forever. So all of that said, how does this apply to Void Rush, my game? Now before we get into that, I just want to say a couple things for the channel. Uh, first of all, if you haven't joined the Discord yet, there's tons of cool people talking about programming and Minecraft and Bucket and really anything else. It's also soon to become the second best place to Besides the Mindstorm Discord to learn about how to use Mindstorm. Second, another big announcement, we now have channel memberships, which is just an extra way of supporting the project if you want. Now, none of my content will be behind paywalls, there's no exclusive videos or anything, everything's going to remain free on my channel, but if you're looking for an extra way to support, channel memberships are a great way to help me out. With all that said, let's get back to the video. So what is the problem in Void Rush? Now it's basically what I described before in my example with the coins. In the game, 
players can buy upgrades with Void Ore. If they die, they lose Void Ore. And this kind of leads to an issue where the players who are getting lots of Void Ore are having more health, they're getting more upgrades, they're getting more powerful, which allows them to get even more Void Ore and more powerful upgrades, and so on. That sounds like a positive feedback loop to me. The graph of Void Rush right now would look something like this, where the top end players are just doing so ridiculously well that no one can really compete with them, and the game is kind of decided in the first two or three minutes when the top players establish their Void Ore and get some upgrades, and by that time the game is basically over for everyone else. And on the flip side of this, we have the positive feedback loop of players doing worse and worse and worse. So really, it's a double issue, because not only is there this feedback loop of top level players getting even stronger, there's also this positive feedback loop where the bottom players are just getting pushed down and down and down because they keep losing void ore and they can't buy more upgrades. So we have to find a way to fix this issue without ruining the competitiveness of the game, because I don't want this to be a party game like Mario Kart. I don't want it to be where players are basically always just fighting for the middle ground and nobody can really ever get ahead or win the game. I want it to be a competitive game. So we're going to have to use a mix of positive and negative feedback loops. So we're going to have to find a way to kind of balance out this positive feedback loop. And also it kind of limits the way you can play the game, because basically if you're not rushing center and getting the void ore and getting upgrades and progressing like that then you are left in the dust now obviously void ore is a huge part of this game and the core mechanic of the game is around retrieving it but we don't want it to be the only way that players can do that we don't want it to be the only way that players can impact the game so rebalancing this we basically want to keep the positive feedback loop of players who are stronger getting stronger but we want to kind of remove or mitigate the one where weaker players get weaker we may want to tone down the stronger get stronger but at the same time we do need the game to push in a direction otherwise it'll never end. So how am I actually going to solve this issue? I've come up with a system that I think is going to help. It's not final yet. I would love to hear all of your feedback on it. Essentially, every team would now have a shield. So I've removed void or stealing. So you can't take other people's void or anymore because I did some playtests with that and it kind of just turned into players would go to the island to get void ore and while they're at the island, 10 players would show up, steal all their void ore and they would die instantly, which is not fun for anyone. So I removed void ore stealing completely. But this system, every team would have a shield and the shield would be like a regenerating health bar and players can attack teams and PCs to deal damage to that shield. And this does two things. First of all, when the shield is broken, one of two things happens. Now I'm not sure yet which one I want to do, Either I'm just going to make it take some void ore off the thing, not give it to the player who broke the shield, but just take it off that team. So it'll be like, think of Sekiro when you're fighting a boss and you have that stamina meter. And once you break their stamina meter, you can do an execution on them, which does huge damage to their health. Or the second option, I will have it increase the void ore it takes when respawning for a certain amount of time. So say blue team shield gets broken. It now costs the blue team maybe three times as much void ore to respawn for a minute. Or something like that. I'm not sure which system I want to go with yet. I'm going to probably test them both and whichever one works better I'll keep, but that's the idea. Now the second thing that happens when you attack a shield, you get a second currency. Now I don't know what to call it yet. If you have any ideas, leave them in the comments. That'd be super helpful. But essentially what these would do is instead of buying upgrades, so upgrades are kind of split into two. There's the upgrades like weapons, armor, pickaxes for mining void ore and stuff like that. So the like material things. And then there's the void powers. Now the void powers would still be purchased with void power. I'm not getting rid of that mechanic, but the rest of the upgrades would now be purchased with this new currency. So essentially, in order to encourage another way of play, players can also choose to attack other people's islands to get this currency to get upgrades. And this kind of helps players who are on the lower end because it will allow them to have another way of playing that doesn't involve directly conflicting with the top players. So if the top players are all trying to get void or in the middle and they're all fighting in the middle, then another player can bridge over to their base, damage their shield, and get some of the new currency to get upgrades and get maybe a bit stronger, and then they can go to center and start trying to take Void Ore. Think of it like the diamond generators in Bed Wars, where players kind of have two ways of playing. They can either go for the diamonds and get team upgrades and kind of build slowly like that on their own, or they can rush other people, or they can rush center. There's a whole bunch of different ways of playing. And that's what I'm trying to introduce in this game, is a couple more ways of playing. And I think this will help because, again, it balances out that issue where players who are at the top are always in direct competition with the players who are at the bottom. And another thing is I think it'll make the game a little bit more challenging because players will constantly have to think about guarding their base. And because of the shield, they'll always have enough time to get back to their base to stop the damage to it. However, if they're out in a fight or they're trying to control middle to get the void ore, they might not have time to go back and they'll end up losing void ore. Overall, I think the system should help a lot in managing players' interactions with each other, trying to keep the stronger players from just absolutely destroying the weaker 
weaker players. But at the same time, we still leave in that positive feedback loop where stronger players get stronger. I'm not sure if I'm going to need systems to tone this down even more, but I think it might be okay because now the strong players, while still having that positive feedback loop, have a bit more to focus on as they have to defend their base as well. And also, again, the weaker players have a way to get stronger without directly competing with the top level players. All right, and that's pretty much everything for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't seen the rest of the devlogs, I recommend this playlist right here, which has a list of all of them from the first one all the way till now. Have an excellent rest of your day.